All right, Hickok 45 here, dual wielding. You say no, I say yes. They're both not the same firearm, but they're both 10 millimeter, all right? Dual wielding, and they were both watermelons. Let's take them up here and uh, see what we have. All right, this one shot a little bit longer, didn't it? I got a few more rounds out of it, I guess, because it's a Glock and it has a 15 round magazine in it. Whereas the Delta Elite, I think has eight in the magazine. But that's all right. The first shot got old Mr. Watermelon. All right, so what are we doing? I don't know, really. Uh, because we wanted to do some little 10 millimeter comparison with 45 ACP, even comparison maybe with a couple of the guys. Again, I'm gonna try to keep this uh, fairly short, you know me, but uh, mainly we wanna compare, do a little comparison with the 45 ACP and the 10 millimeter in some really common firearms like the Glock 20 and the Glock 21. Basically the same firearm, okay, but in different calibers. Same here, Delta Elite and then uh, the Series 80 Colt 45. Same gun, they weigh, I think, 38 ounces. They weigh the same. These weigh about the same. So, a little comparison there. We might even do a little comparison uh, between uh, the Delta Elite and the Glock. You know, if you're looking at buying a 10 millimeter, uh, you know, just give you my impression. And that's really what this is. This is not a ballistics test, all right? So, you ballistics nerds out there, 10 Outdoors 9, I'm talking to you. But people, uh, if you're looking for that, that's not what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you my impressions of uh, the 10 millimeter versus the 45 ACP, maybe a couple of editorial comments on why I would carry probably the 45 ACP uh, over the 10, depending on what I'm doing. And there are times when I'd carry the 10 over the 45. So a little bit of talk about, about that, all right? Maybe there'll be a, a kernel or two that, uh, that you can use, okay? I started to say I have intelligence. That'd be a little bit of a stretch, wouldn't it? So anyway, we got two 1911s, same gun basically, one in 10. Uh, again, we're just shooting regular ammo here mo for the most part, although we might shoot some of the hotter stuff here. We, in fact, we will. Uh, 180 grain, uh, 10 millimeter American Eagle, moderate you know, power factor, still hotter, much hotter than 40 but it's, uh, it's uh, not, I guess, probably a moderate range, uh, 10 millimeter round. And this would be up towards the, the higher end, maybe not the highest. There are people who load 10 millimeter out there to take down an elephant. And then there are people out there who feel like if you're not shooting something that will take down an elephant in 10 millimeter, you're a wimp and all that. So those people will have comments too, I'm sure. But that's kind of what we're doing, just a little general information and, and my impressions. And I've really not done much of it, tell you the truth. I took one shot here a minute ago before the video. I wanted to save it for the video uh, with both of these. And uh, that, that one or two shots, I didn't notice a lot of difference. So 10 millimeter, and we're shooting, uh, well, you don't see the box, but uh, in 45, it's the same thing. 230 grain American Eagle and 10 millimeter, 230, uh, 180 grain American Eagle. All right, so let me do the first thing I was going to do. I'm going to just shoot, load up. You've seen me do this before with various things. It's a good way to do it uh, because, you know, shoot them side by side in, you know, quick succession because I could shoot this gun today a thousand rounds and tomorrow come out and shoot that gun a thousand rounds. And I don't know, your, your memory, especially my memory, doesn't last long. You think, wow, that, that kick a little more, maybe. Maybe the 45 kick, I, that seemed like a kick more than the 10 yesterday or even three hours earlier. You know, you just need to do it you know, very quickly uh, without a lot of time uh, between, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's get them both hot. That's why I, I usually do that, have them both hot. Okay, we're hot. And are we hot? We're not hot with this one. All right, we are now. Safeties are on and they're hot. So I'm gonna take some shots, 10 millimeter, same weight gun, the same gun basically, same trigger, uh, very, very little difference. So let's just shoot the 10. Uh, let's shoot the cowboy about three times. Then I'm gonna grab this one. All right. Okay, fresh on my mind. Let's do that again. Do a double tap. All right. All right. What are my impressions? I th let's not tell them, John. Let's not tell them what I think. No, uh, 
the 10 millimeter is just a little bit more whack to it okay not a lot of difference though i don't notice a whole lot of difference i think while we're on the 1911s why don't we just go ahead and put some of the hotter stuff in uh i i don't notice a lot of difference to tell you the truth i there's a there is a little difference though the 45 is just a little bit milder oops let's not do that that's 45 see i reversed them here i gotta keep them straight uh now i don't have only thing is i don't have any like plus p45 but i want to shoot with this anyway uh if you're shooting a 10 in some serious ammo you're going hunting and then by the way this is federal trophy bonded we appreciate the help from federal furnishing all this ammo and all they do for us just like we do bud's gun shop which is where this gun came from so we appreciate budsgunshop.com and federal premium uh so this is what you would this is what i would be carrying as well, and, and this is another thing i kind of give you some of my personal experiences uh, if i'm in the mountains that's legal of course i'm where there could be some big game dangerous game possibly uh bears that kind of thing now if i'm going to alaska i might take more than just a glock obviously although the glock uh, uh 20 i understand i hear from people all the time is very popular in uh, alaska and the 10 and, and other guns too perhaps but uh but i know in that it's, it's very popular because now it's not a uh, 4570 it's not a 458 wind mag but as far as something that's fairly light you can have in a holster with a 15 round magazine or even a 17 round magazine in it and two or three other 15 round magazines with some hot ammo you could do worse right okay so anyway uh, but you, you'd be carrying something like this. It's, it's what I carry when I'm in the mountains. Uh, either the 29, which is a smaller 10 millimeter, or the Glock 20. All right. So, like I said, I just want to give you some personal information, some personal, not essential information. And uh, everybody has to make their own choices. 10 millimeter is not a do-all cartridge, but it's pretty pot, pretty powerful. All right. So we got some hotter stuff here now, and. Uh, I'll compare it. Let's say you're carrying, and a lot of people would say, this is what you ought to be carrying if you're carrying a 10, something like this hot. Now, generally, if it was for personal defense, it would not be a, a big old trophy bonded soft point like this. It would be maybe a hollow point, but it'd be a hot round like this. Okay, so maybe that's, maybe this is a, a fair comparison. So let's do it again. We're hot. We're hot. All right. So now, comparing 10 to 10, even though it's a little bit of apples to oranges, it's kind of what you would uh, be carrying in a 45, probably. Good standard ammo. And that may be, obviously, it might be a, a hollow point, but it would, uh, yeah, wouldn't necessarily be something hotter than good old 230 grain ammo, it might be. But in 10, if you think you need a 10, uh, you're probably carrying something pretty hot, like this. All right, cowboy, let's do a two liter. Wow. Yeah. Now, there's going to be some difference here. Let's try a two liter. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's like we picked up a 38 special <laughs> compared with a real 10. There's a pot that needs smoking. Boy. It knocked everything around. Woo. Okay, now we have a difference in recoil. So I, I kind of rolled into maybe a more realistic situation just accidentally. Uh, that's, that, again, I'd be carrying something like that if I needed serious protection against big animals, uh, dangerous animals, and uh, uh, what else? Or for hunting, yeah, I was going to say. For hunting, if you're going to hunt something, hunting deer or whatever, large game, you would want some, some hot ammo. So generally speaking, in the real world, for the real purpose of a 10 millimeter, I guess you'd be more likely to be, that would be a more valid comparison perhaps. All right. So, all right. So 45 is a little bit of a pussycat compared with uh, the 10 millimeter in a, in a warm loading. And that might answer, just that alone might answer a lot of people. Over the years, I've seen a lot of questions about what's the difference between 45 and 10 millimeter? Is the 45 better or 10 millimeter better and all that kind of thing? Well, that alone will hopefully give you a little bit of insight. If you're kind of new to shooting, you've never shot one of them or, or either, 
uh, the 45, uh, a novice shooter looks at that and might think, well, it's a bigger bullet. It's heavier. It's bigger. 45 is supposed to be the ultimate cartridge. You know, well, 10 millimeters is actually more powerful. A little bit smaller hole. I think it's about 40 caliber, you know, 10 millimeter. Right? And uh, this is 45, so it's, it's bigger, but it's not as powerful a cartridge. All right, so that's a big difference. Let's try a little bit of that with the Glocks now. Got John's 21 here, my 20. Uh, let's see what we got loaded. We've got, we'll do the standard stuff here. Again, I don't want to take all day. I just want to give you an idea. See how much difference. All right. We've got 10 millimeter standard ammo. All right. That's pretty feels pretty stout you look at what oh yes shoot this one real fast almost forgot all right okay uh almost forgot what i was preaching about earlier gotta shoot them right away i i sense about the same difference uh you know comparing apples to apples and apple oranges to oranges you know different guns but there the difference in the recoil is, is very similar the 45 is just a little bit milder but it's not significant not significant now when i put some of this in here we'll probably notice more of a, of a change all right i will say in either one though because i've shot this in both guns it is uh it's con very controllable it's not like it's something you can't control the the warmer 10 millimeter and you've seen other videos we, we've done several with this firearm i shot some of the very hottest stuff i could find heavy heavy bullets and all sorts of things very controllable in fact people uh i think accused me in one video of, of the ammo being weak or something just because it was so controllable well it just is you know they're uh, easy to handle and uh i'm gonna fill that magazine up Give you a good dose of this stuff. Ah, trophy bonded. I know it's a little overkill. He's shooting steel targets and two liters trophy bonded ammo, but that's okay. That's what we do. All right, let's shoot some of this. See the difference. Again, real 10 millimeter ammo. Although I'm sure you can find something even hotter than that, but it's pretty stout. I'm gonna lay those are hot. I'm laying them right there, pointing down range. All right, trophy bonded. All right, cowboy, you're getting beat up today. I know. <laughs> and right there, 45. Yeah, let's go gonging. <laughs> All right, let's finish this guy off with the gong. 10 millimeter, heavy rounds. Wow, cowboy. <laughs> Could you tell how fast those are getting to the gong? Uh, much faster than the 45. So. Yeah, those are those are some warm rounds. Uh, that again, that's what a 10 millimeter is designed to be. Uh, I mean, ideally, uh, I mean, I don't see a big problem with shooting just moderate ammo because it's a lot warmer than uh, 40. You know, but yet there's some really stout ammo out there and very good hunting ammo and very good defensive ammo. So yeah, there's a big difference between and, and these guns too shooting that that kind of ammo. It makes this feel like a pussycat for sure. All right does the same over here uh know what that tells you but by and large it's uh it's very controllable no matter what round you've got so it kind of depends on what you need what your needs are uh no problem carrying this thing you can handle a 10 millimeter the it's a little bit heavier the barrel's a little bit heavier but it's not a lot heavier than the 45 uh very controllable with that polymer grip and everything absorbs some of the recoil and that and not just in these guns there there's some other tens out there i just don't have them uh, and they have to be made well. They have to be uh, made well in order to, to stand up. And uh, these are a couple of the early ones, you know, the, the Bren 10, of course, I think 83, something like that, based on the CZ design. And then the Colt was the first one to come out with a, uh, 
you know, from a major manufacturer, you know, in the 10 millimeter with a Delta Elite. And then Glock came uh, along not all that long after and uh, a really viable alternative for sure. Okay, great gun. Uh, for defense, I hadn't talked to, let's talk a little bit about the, the ammo. I looked up ammo, uh, just this kind of ammo, American Eagle uh, on ammo seek around the, the internet. And for 45, well, for 10 millimeter, it runs about almost twice as much uh, as 45. So that's a consideration. If you're looking at these cartridges, thinking about one of them, or you, you got the hots for the 10 millimeter. You've read the ballistics on it. You know, you see the ballistics test online. Wow, what a round, I gotta have that. Well, maybe you do. Just be aware, it's more expensive to shoot. There's plenty of ammo out there. I mean, look around, it's, it's out there in gun shops online, uh, lots of different loadings and different companies. Uh, it's going to run more expensive, but uh, it's there, okay? So that's one of the things, it's cost to shoot. Uh, of course, you could load yourself. Like, I, I haven't loaded in a long time, but I used to load 10 millimeter. And, uh, you know, obviously anything you hand load yourself is going to be less. Especially around that doesn't have a huge market penetration. Those are the rounds where you really save a lot of money on. Because there's no reason for this to cost any more than a 45, for example. The components are not any more expensive, really. See, it's like 45 Colt, 44 Special. Some of those rounds, they really shouldn't cost any more than 45 ACP or anything around. But they end up costing more because there are not as many people buying them. It's a net aspect of the economy. You know, it's just not as big a, a market out there for it. And so it costs more. Uh, whereas if you're reloading them yourself, you know, there's very little, if any, difference. Okay, so something to think about. But it does cost a little more, okay? Uh, Recoil is what I've been talking about. They're both very shootable. Uh, the guns, you know, a, a 10 millimeter doesn't cost much more or any more than a 45 in the same gun and a Glock. I don't I think it may cost a little more. Uh, now these guns, it, it will run a little more. I forget the difference in price, but uh, a 45, the Delta Elite is going to run a little bit more. Again, it's a, more of a market thing though. Okay, but there's a variety of guns out there if you're interested in a 10 millimeter. Not a big deal. Uh, Self-defense, I didn't talk about. Uh, a lot of people are, why, don't you, why doesn't everybody carry that if it's that hot and that powerful? Well, some people do. And I'm not going to argue with people about that or debate here about that. I uh, have some issue carrying anything that's a little non-standard of uh, self-defense. If you talk to oh, a lot of police instructors or uh, CCW instructors, uh, Masa Yub, uh, he's probably going to tell you not to carry something too unusual or uh, or ammo that's way out there, some super duper ammo somebody came up with that's supposed to rip through a car and looks jagged and, is, and it's got some dangerous name. Those kinds of things. You're better off if you stick with what generally the police carry. Uh, if you if you don't want a hard time in court, probably okay. But there's two sides to that, so don't take my side necessarily. But that's just what I do. Carry something kind of standard, a lot of good stuff to carry out there. Good guns, good calibers, good ammo. You don't have to go way off out there in the space to get something that will work. So that's good. Now, the last thing I'll do, uh, besides yak a whole lot more, no, I won't do that. Uh, have we compared it all across a platform? Let's just do a little of that, just one time, okay? Trying to give you a little idea here, some of the useless things I can show you. Why don't we just compare, well, since we're talking about 10, let's just compare a little bit with this. We'll just use the big boys too, why don't we do that, okay? Load a couple of the, the one magazine of these uh, trophy bonded rounds for the Delta Elite. We'll have the same ammo in the Glock as this. So that might be another question you have. You're, you've already decided you want a 10, and uh, you're just not sure which platform to go with, okay? You think you might want a 1911, but you're not sure. You like Glocks, seems kind of big, uh, but a little bit thicker than the 1911. I could be using the loader, I? I've almost got enough here. So let's just give you my impressions of this before we uh, let you go to dinner, because I know most of you are getting hungry. You got all that brass lying around, don't you love brass? Okay, so we've got the trophy bonded, the warm stuff in both. Let's put these side by side, get them pointed down range. Okay. That was brilliant. Okay. 
And I might split these up a little bit here and uh, just to get a good feel for the difference. Because I think the Glock 20 is, is generally pretty sweet to shoot. All right. And uh, let's see here. I've not really done this yet, I guess, comparing these two. All right. Mr. Cowboy, I'm going to beat on you some more. <laughs> Okay, woo, definitely knocks you around a little bit. All right, I'm gonna go for the uh, tombstone. I'm gonna finish the magazine. Okay, I'm gonna try not to miss it with this. Well, yeah, that was me on those first couple of shots. Uh, okay, the Glock is a little, a little bit more pleasant to shoot, uh, but again, there's not a lot of difference. Part of the problem with this one is that beaver tail is not so nice. If you had a Delta Elite or a 1911 of any kind, 10 millimeter, with a nice beaver tail, extended, high rise, you can see it's kind of worked on my hand there a little bit, uh, this would be more pleasant. There wouldn't be quite as much difference, but I, I have to say that uh, this does, it doesn't punish you as much. Okay, I guess the polymer gives a little bit or something. Plus, you got a big grip. You're wrapped around. So, it's a little more pleasant to shoot, but not a big difference. Not enough that you would, if you like a 1911, you say, well, I can't carry that. They're both going to kick you, knock you around with full house 10 millimeter a little bit. Uh, but uh, they both work. So, 10 millimeter, a uh, little bit of a controversial uh, cartridge. And, uh, you know, it just hasn't... Uh, become quite as popular as a lot of people would like for it to but it's there the ammo's available there are guns available good firearms if nothing else these two will serve you quite well and uh it, it's an interesting cartridge because it has some punch to it and it works and these firearms handle it pretty well so uh, there's good ammo available good bullets hollow points and different things so the 10 millimeter again versus 45 45 is more standard, it's more accepted, it's more, uh, you know, it's mainstream. You're probably gonna have more ammo selection. You go to a gun shop or somewhere where you buy ammo, you're probably gonna find more choices in, in 45 than you are 10. It's not gonna be quite as expensive, okay? Uh, but if you're willing to, uh, to reach out a little bit and look around, maybe even do hand loading, you wouldn't have to do hand loading, but just, uh, you know, maybe dig around a little bit more to find ammo you want, you'll, you'll find it in 10 and you'll just pay a little bit more. Good guns available. So I, I'm not gonna come down and advise you to stay away from one or choose one over the other, of course. They're both uh, very nice cartridges. Otherwise, why would I have both? Right? Pretty smart, huh? Life is good. Oh, since I'm still here, let me thank SDI for all their help. SDI is a fully accredited online gunsmithing school. Check them out at sdi.edu. We'd also like to thank Bud's Gun Shop and Federal Premium for all of their support. You can find us on Full 30 also now, and you can find the links to our Facebook pages and the other YouTube pages in the description of any video. So I invite you to check out the description in every video or any video, you'll find what you need to know. And you'd better do it.